What's up guys, Carbone. Today I'm standing in front of a Prevac system that is on a train Centrivac chiller. The chiller is a low pressure chiller, has all 123 inside, and its Prevac system circulates hot water through the evaporator during the off cycle so that we don't bring in any non-condensables inside because the evaporator would normally be in a vacuum. Anyone who's operated a low pressure chiller knows that if the machine is off for extended periods of time, we do run a risk of bringing in non-condensables and it could take a little while, sometimes even days, to bring that machine back into a vacuum to get rid of those non-condensables. So this machine prevents and helps prevent that. It's designed and manufactured by a company called MIC. They're located out of New Jersey, and they've been nice enough to allow us to come here and explore their, their piece of equipment. So on this control panel, this is the Prevac Plus control panel, we have a pressure seal button. The pressure seal is ignited. That means that our Prevac system is energized, and our chiller itself is in idle mode. We have a display panel showing us right now that our chill is at zero pounds, so the Prevac system is, is properly working. Then we could view different set points if we wanted to. So another function, and a, a, a really great function that this device has, is we're able, able to perform a leak check. Normally you'd have to bring over all the equipment that you needed. We could do it right here with the press of a button. I'm gonna demonstrate. So we're gonna turn the device off. We're gonna hold in our set point. We're gonna hit leak check. We're able to now pressurize this evaporator anywhere from zero to six pounds. And as we turn this knob here, you're gonna see the pressure will rise inside our evaporator. By doing this, we're able to then pressurize the, the evaporator to see if there's any kind of leaks going on. The length of time that this leak check will run will only be for eight hours because that is the average length of time that a refrigeration engineer works. So they don't want it going into the next shift. The next shift would have to operate it themselves. So to get it out of leak check mode, we're gonna press the leak check button, turn it off, come back here to pressure seal, and now our pre-vac system is energized again and we can see that our battery percentage is now going up to where it's normally supposed to be. Then we have different safety functions. Pressure is not rising, high temperature, heat is wrong for extended periods of time. This is going to allow us to know if there's any malfunctions either with the chiller or with the prevac system. So the prevac system will shut down and then we don't have to worry about any malfunctions or causing any damage to either device. We also have status here. Full power will only be energized if that heater is at full power, usually at six pounds of leak check. Then we have a prevac online, so we, now we have, meaning the system is energized here, we have a pressure seal button is lit up. We have a line voltage, meaning that we have power coming to this. And then we also have prevac standby. Now this device was designed for chillers with R11 refrigerant. This particular chiller here has R123, but it actually works with a couple other chillers with different types of refrigerant. I'm gonna put those down on the bottom. And these are the different types of refrigerant that this prevac system will work with. All right, guys, I'm going to go over a little bit of our pre-alert. This is our safety system for our prevac. So the safety system has two different safeties and two different cutouts. One cutout is going to be a pressure cutout that is going to shut down the prevac system if the evaporator pressure exceeds 10 pounds. At 10 pounds, it will shut the whole system down so that we don't run a risk of rupturing our rupture guard. The second disconnect or shut off or safety is going to be a 30 amp breaker. So what would happen in either case, if we got too high or the breaker had a trip, I'm going to just for demonstration purposes, the breaker trips, we're going to go into alarm. If you needed to reset the alarm, you would come here, press your reset and re-energize your breaker. It's that simple. So that is how our pre-alert for the prevac system functions. All right, what we have here is our aqua power boiler for our prevac system. Inside this aqua power boiler, we have six heating elements. The six heating elements are recommended to be replaced every 10 years. And in between the heating elements, we have our thermistor and our temperature switch. Behind our boiler, I'll show you in one second, we have our circulator pump. The circulator pump is rated at 30 gallons per minute, and that is what circulates the hot water through the boiler into our evaporator. We also have two check valves here. One is going into our boiler, and one is coming out of the boiler. I'm gonna show you that. Here, this is our pressure switch for our prevac system. So this pressure switch is going to be 
reading our pressure inside our evaporator to let the prevac know what is going on. So it's going to be communicating the pressure in the evaporator to our control panel, which is right behind me. All right, what we have here is our rupture guard. This rupture guard is set to trip at 15 pounds. If this rupture guard trips, we're going to release our refrigerant out into the atmosphere. That is the main reason why we cannot pressurize this evaporator higher than 10 pounds. If we pressurize it higher than 10 pounds, again, we're running the risk of rupturing this rupture guard. That is why our prevac system has a safety built in and the safety device is set for 10 pounds. So anything over 10 pounds will shut down and we don't have to worry about releasing any refrigerant.